now with power of a power. So this is learning target, what is this, number six? Learning target six, or unit six. We are learning target five, part two. So yesterday we did negative and zero exponents with multiplication and division. Today we're going to do negative and zero exponents with the power of the power. Okay? Negative and zero exponent with power of a power. Okay? And we're going to start out really easy. Okay? Dominic, you want to grab that door for me, please? Okay. Um, one of the biggest properties that you're going to need to know is, and I think we already um, kind of talked about this. Let's just review what, what we would do here. So let's take four-fifths and square it. Okay? So I'm going to kind of take you through a long process here. Four-fifths squared is the same as four-fifths times four-fifths, right? Which is 16 25ths, which is basically, I already had told you that when you square a fraction, it means you square both the numerator and the denominator, right? So this step really isn't necessary. It just kind of goes to show you that when you have that, it's squared like that, okay? But I want to talk about next what we would do if I took that four-fifths to the negative two power. I'm going to show you the long way, and then there's going to be a shortcut. And you're going to see it. And you're going to say, can't we just do this? Okay? So what this really means is I have to take, because the whole base is four-fifths, right? I have to take that whole base of four-fifths and put it to the bottom just to get that two positive, right? So you're going to be already anticipating that you're looking at a mess because you're going to have a fraction in a fraction. So you're really going to have one over four-fifths now to the positive second power, right? Don't worry, you're not going to have to do all these steps. And this line means divided by, doesn't it? So isn't this just one, another way to write this, divided by four-fifths squared? Yes? And what is four-fifths squared? We already determined was what? Sixteen twenty-fifths. And this is what I'm doing in my seventh grade math class right now. We're dividing fractions, but we don't really divide fractions, do we? And do not say keep, change, flip. You are not allowed to ever say that because that's a shortcut rule. What do you do if you don't divide fractions? You multiply by the reciprocal, right? So I'm not going to really take that one and divide by 16 25ths. I'm going to take that one and multiply by 25 sixteenths. You're like, holy cow, what are, do we have to do this every time? No. I, and then what is 1 times 25 sixteenths? So, whew, all that. I went from 4 fifths to the negative 2 power, and my answer was 25 sixteenths. Hmm. Is there a shortcut that I can apply to this where I could skip all these steps? What do you think? Yes, I've seen people's hands do this. What are they doing? They're just kind of flipping. So the fancy word for flip is reciprocal, right? It's actually uh, multiplicative inverse when you're in eighth grade. So here's the deal with fractions raised to a negative base. It's going to be a huge shortcut for you. Unless you like that, you can do all that if you want. But here's your, your shortcut. Your shortcut is going to be, oh, well, I'm going to end up having to move it down, flip it around. So I could take four-fifths to the negative two power and really make it five-fourths to the positive two power. And will it give me the same answer? Yeah. Did you just follow that? 
negative exponent with a fraction base to change it instead of doing it your traditional way of putting it underneath and then doing all this business take the reciprocal of it and that turns the exponent positive okay so if I wanted to take three eighths to the negative second power all I have to do is really take eight thirds to the positive two power, right? Okay, so that answer is actually gonna be 64 ninths, right? Don't forget to cube the denominator as well. A couple of you, actually many of you forgot to do that um, on our last uh, check for understanding. Okay, so that's a pretty important rule to know. So now let's move on to the rest of it. So you think you got that down, Pat? Let's do this. If you have like a, um, so if I have H over B, A over B to the negative X power, you can really turn that into what? Dylan? B over A to the X power. Yes, B over A to the positive X power. Hey, it's one of those things that's like really easy to know once you're taught it, right? But you would have no idea that that it really would be okay to do unless somebody told you. Well, now you know, right? So it's one of those that if you ever encounter it on a, you know, a math test or MSTEP or anything else, now you know. Okay. So now let's get back to power of a power. So remember how I started you out with a to the fourth to the fifth power? No negative exponents anywhere. You just said a to the 20th, right? Because you knew that you had to, you had five groups of those four and five groups of four, okay? So just like we're going to do next, let's make it a to the negative fourth to the fifth power. And that's going to make it what? Instead of a to the 20th, a to the? Negative 20th. And then do you know what to do with a to the negative 20th? You make it over 1, right? So this is actually going to be 1 over a to the positive 20th. Are you following me? Okay. Would the same answer be true if this 4 was positive but the 5 was negative? Sure. Right? Because you're still getting a to the negative 20th which is still 1 over a to the positive 20th, so nothing big yet so far, okay? Because eventually we got to put these all together, okay? So what if I had, <clears throat> and this is where it kind of starts to get a little tricky, and this is what we want to, i got to find the exact right problem here. Um, be careful of here, yeah. If I have 2a to the 4th to the negative 5th power, okay, versus 2a to the negative 4th to the 5th power, because you're going to have different answers, right? So, let's do this one because it's easier. Notice that, I noticed up here that didn't really change our answer, okay? Here there's a coefficient. Now this is on the outside. What would this do? So this would give me 2 to the positive fifth power, which is what? It's 32. Don't forget to raise that to that power. A to the negative 20th. And then you know what to do from there, right? None of your answers can have negative exponents in them. So you're going to keep the 32, but move the a to the 20th, and now it's positive, right? So now, as I'm looking at this, I can't do the same thing because I can't take 2 to the negative fifth power. All right? So what is my option at this point, do you think? Take and move the whole base. The whole base is 2a to the fourth. So really what that means is you're going to have 1 over 
2a to the fourth to the positive fifth now, right? Which is going to give you 1 over 32a to the 20th. See the difference in the answers? Here this was taken to the fifth power because your exponent was positive. Nothing needed to change until after you did the multiplication, right? Here my exponent was negative. I don't want to take a 2 to a negative fifth power. I'm just going to take that. So it kind of matters if the exponent that's negative is on the inside or outside, right? So do you see how our answer got to be this? Okay, here's another tricky one. What if this, um, what if this was the problem? Um, well, I'm going to just show you this. Let's do a little experiment here. It should work out the same way, and if it doesn't, I don't know what to say. We'll see. So as I look at this, I the only difference is this time I made them both negative. But I can take 2 to the negative fifth power, so I can't just do that and make it positive 20. So what are our options? We have to get it the whole thing down, right? Okay, here's what's weird about this. I told you... At, September, when we did bell work, that moving exponents and their bases from one side of a fraction to the other makes them positive, right? Move it back up, it's negative. Move it down, it's positive. However, this base is protected. So do you see what I'm getting at right here? When I move this base in this exponent with it, the only exponent that's going to change to positive is the 5, not the 4. It's like in a little protected bubble there, right? You never change bases, ever, ever. Just exponents, okay? The base may contain an exponent, but then it's still a base, right? And not an exponent. So it's kind of like, oh my gosh. So this becomes 2a to the negative fourth, now to the positive fifth. Okay? Did you follow that? So if the exponent is inside of a parenthesis, you have to leave it, okay? So then, I, get, I know what you're probably thinking because I'm thinking the same thing. Because watch what our answer is going to end up to be. Our answer is going to be 1 over 2 to the positive fifth is what? 32. A to the negative 4 times 5 is negative 20. Now what do I have to do with that a to the negative 20th? Get it back up there, right? So now my final answer is going to be a to the positive 20th. I shouldn't have done that. I should have kept that there. So a to the positive 20th over 32. Okay. So here's kind of another way to do this problem. You may or may not want to do it this way. I'm just going to show you. Some people are better with keeping it all intact, meaning that's the base. I'm going to get that 5 negative, and then I'll deal with whatever I have to after. Then there are people who say, I want to move as little as possible. So what 2a to the negative 4th to the negative 5th really means and you may like this option better, so really watch. It means you're going to take 2 to the negative 5th and a to the 4th to the negative 5th. So watch. Don't move anything just yet. Take your 2 to the negative 5th and take your a to the negative 4th to the negative 5th. You see what I'm getting at here? So when I do each of them to the negative 5th power, what do I get with the a's? I get... A to the positive 20th. Woohoo, it can stay. But this has to, it, you know it has to move because that's negative, right? Do you see what I did? So, I'm going to do another one so you can kind of test out which way you like better. Okay, Elizabeth. Because you're not really multiplying, because it's not a positive times a negative. 
You can't really, mul you know what I mean? Just because you're not multiplying, it's because you're raising to a power. Yeah. Yeah. It would, yes. And I like what he said. He said if both the, the exponent within the base and the exponent outside are negative, isn't it going to make that positive? Yes. But it, ha it still has an effect on the coefficient, though. So you have to picture that, that negative 5 being right there, and that's telling you that, okay, your 32 is not going to be in the numerator because it's to a negative fifth power. It's got to go to the denominator. Let's do another one, okay? Let's take... Um, 5x to the negative third power to the negative second power. Okay? So maybe you want to separate them in your notes. Option 1, option 2. So, op yeah, Joey. Yes, that's going to be on my notes coming up, Sue. Yes, yep, we'll do that one next. Thank you. Okay, option one is just treat it as got to get that two positive, got to get that two positive and not worry about anything else. And that may be your thinking. I don't know. Everybody's brain works differently. So somebody might say, I just want to get the whole darn thing positive, but that three stays negative, right? So be very careful with that because you may be tempted to change it to positive, but only that changes. Then you would say, okay, I have to take 5 to the second power, which is 25. Don't forget, all this is over 1. And then I have to take x to the negative third to the second power, which is negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6. Then I gotta turn around and move that x to the sixth back up. I just moved it down, right? But now you gotta move it back up. So your answer is x to the positive sixth over 25. Are you okay so far on that? All right. Let's take a look at option two. Option two is not looking at it as a whole. And I'm gonna take the whole base just to get that negative two positive. You're looking at it as you're breaking down the base. You're breaking down the base and taking the 5 to the negative second power and the x to the negative third to the second power, right? Remember how we learned that? That's all that means. You're kind of distributing that negative without really multiplying, you're, except you're distributing by raising to the power. So I could look at this problem and in the very next step do two things. I can move this 5 to the positive 2 now down, and in the very same step, I can do that. Oops, I was going to say, screw my whole answer up if that wasn't there. So that then is x to the positive 6. And actually, to skip even another step, do you really have to write that whole 5 squared, or could you just do it in your head? So could you look at this problem and potentially do it all in one step? I say potentially. Because if you've not been with me from day one learning target one, <clears throat> you probably have no clue what's going on right now anyway. So you have to be with me on this. So you could have skipped that step. So this could be x to the 6 over 25 right from the get-go. Do you see how they kind of match up? Okay, you want to try one on your own? I'm going to give you one, and I want you to try it maybe both ways, or maybe try it whichever way feels natural to you, okay? So how about um, 4x to the negative third to the negative second. So go ahead and give that one a go. A lot of you are done. I think you did it the way I think I know you did it. Did you just kind of separate it in your head, move it? 
Okay? Just be very careful with that because that might come back and bite you later. I was always a person who showed every step even though I knew, you know what I mean? And if that's you, don't test yourself now. Now is not the time to say, oh, I think I'm going to just do it all in one step. Write it all out. What's it going to take, an extra four seconds? You know what I mean? So you could look at this and say, four to the negative two power needs to go down and then your 16 is going to be here and this is positive six. Is that what you got? Okay, if you need me to do it out the long way, is everybody okay with that? Okay, good. So let's move on then to the next kind of problem because we've got to start to get a little trickier with this. Um, so, I mean, you're, you're going to know what to do if you have like A to the 7th, B to the negative 4th, to the negative 3rd. So your option here is move it. I, I Seriously, I would, would not move the whole thing. I would not take this and go A to the 7th, B to the negative 4th, now to the positive 3rd. I wouldn't do it because just do your multiplication, right? And then move what you have to do. So if there's an operation to do, my advice is do it first, then see if you have to move. Because watch, this is going to be negative 21, but this B is going to be positive 12. So only the A will need to move, right? So this is actually going to be B to the 12th over A to the 21st. Are you okay so far? All right. Um, moving on. Okay, what if I had this? Um, negative 3. Oh, we didn't talk about what that, what that would do. If I had negative 3x to the 5th to the negative 2nd power, that would mean you would have to do what? If you look at it as take that to the negative two power, what's going to end up on the bottom this time? I, I feel like I feel I, I have to show you that, show you at least this step because I don't want to encourage you doing stuff in your head, especially. So okay, so if maybe you have to show one step, that's not a bad one to show, right? Because now you see that. Um, and actually, everything's going to end up moving this time, isn't it? Because the x one is going to end up negative, right? So it's almost like you are better off to just go ahead and do that. So here you're going to have 1 over, does the negative 3 change? No, nothing in the base changes. Just that. x to the, um, well, I guess you could just keep that x to the 10th here. But then it's going to end up doing what? Going down anyway, right? So in my final step, I'm going to say 1 over 9x to the positive 10th. Remember that that's positive because that's negative. Good? And even? Mm -hmm. Negative times a negative is a positive. So the positive stays. Okay, okay. let's do what Joe said. Let's take what if I have negative 4x to the 0, y to the 3rd to the 0 power. What is that? It's the easiest problem on the planet. Yes, it's 1. The answer is 1 because I told you yesterday that anything to the 0 power is 1. Anything. I don't care what's inside the parentheses. If it's got an exponent of zero, it's one. Got it? Okay, let's move on to a little more challenging. Oh, gosh, where does the time go? Um, boy, I don't know that we're going to be able to. Okay, here's what I think. I think that I, that I just took that long to go over these problems with you that I didn't even have a chance to go over these problems with you because they contain all three operations. I hope you understand how I made this assignment. 1 through 10 was negatives just with the multiplying rule. 11 through 20 was negatives just with the dividing rule, right? 21 through 28 were just negatives with the power of a power rule. 
And then when we get to this whole back side, that's where I take all three and throw them in one. And that, I kind of feel like, is a whole nother day. It's not enough time for me to go over it right now. So that means that you kind of luck out because your only problems that you can do today are 21 through 28. Okay? Yes, Esteban. Can you explain 